Why, hello there. I was just polishing this platinum Rolex Date 840. Welcome to Watches Live 24. This is Rolex and precious metal and friends. We have complications on the table. We have enamel dials. We have precious metal Rolex. And yes, we have watches spanning the full spectrum of price and possibility for collectors. I'm Tim. This is Watches Live and this is Watchbox Reviews, the only show we do on this channel. But we're giving you good stuff because you stopped by. Instead of our usual hats and pens and occasional tote bags and ties, we have a Bird Valle horological sculpture, luscious hand-finished lucite. These take about three weeks to make from start to finish. The material suspends watch parts that have been reclaimed from the watchmaker's bench, individually selected for color and volume for their vivid combination of textures, mechanical and aesthetic value. This is a watch on the brain kind of giveaway worth $2,700. Now, as difficult as they are to make, it's the details that really make it worthwhile. And you can see on the back, the engraved sterling silver Bird Valle plaque, every single one of these featuring the plaque, every single one of these different, effectively each a piece unique. You can see the tote bag that comes. There's also a beautiful wooden case that we include with these. You're going to get the full set, everything that comes with it from Bird Valle's atelier in New York City. Okay, I promised you Rolex. Let's roll. This, well, why not double up? This in my right hand is the new hotness. This is the Rolex Date 840. Now this is what debuted in 2015. You can see a number of features that set it apart from the previous watch. Guys, can we focus, get that a little bit more? Perfect. Now you can see this is what they call the quadrant style dial. It's subtle, but if you look carefully, you'll see that the dial has been quartered into perpendicular arrays of striations that are actually cut with lasers. The faceted and applied white gold Roman numerals are applied afterwards. They are white gold even though they've been blued. You can see from this angle that there is a quadrant effect about this dial. What really sets the Date 840 apart from the Date 82 is not the size or the dial. They're very close in aesthetic. And just for comparison's sake, here is the 2008 to 2014 Date 82. You can see it has the same glacier blue dial with a different treatment, diamond polished and hand applied white gold Roman numerals. But the difference here is subtle. It's not in the dials and it's not in the case size. Where it is, and you're gonna see this clearly from that angle, is in the lug to lug dimension. You can see that the Day Date 2 is 53 plus lug to lug, whereas the Day Date 40 is 47.7 lug to lug. It's because only the Day Date 2 has solid end links. They're pivoted on the Day Date 40. And this is something that has not been well communicated, but if you can wear a 36 millimeter Day Date, chances are you can wear a Day Date 40. Whereas you're gonna wanna make sure that you can ship a Yacht Master 2 on your wrist before you pick up a Date 8 2. It's a bigger, burlier watch on the wrist. Okay, let's see who's joining us from around the world. I can see Vertical Mind, Watch Lover in Hawaii, Bob Rouleau, Yahia Balba joining us from Egypt and Canada, the best from, surprise, surprise, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Hail Bob finally in for a live show. Andrew ST12, Russell 996, Edward Ledden of Sweden. You were first. All right, so I promised you precious metal Rolex. Here's an unusual case. We had a client who wanted to buy the watch and then have a video made. And I'm always open to, do, to doing this. I've done it a couple of times. But he wanted me to make a video of the watch so when he took delivery, he could watch the video. Well, sir, if you're out there, here is your K series, so circa 2001, Rolex Date 8 118238. Now this is the watch that debuted in the year 2000. That was the year we got the second generation double quick set Date 8. The primary differences were a reprofiled case, a little bit more substantial, and you'll note the finishing difference, the hallmark of this later generation. It did away with the satin finish on top of the lugs in favor of full polish. This was also the generation that marked the arrival of a more substantial and beautifully made 
Rolex President Bracelet and Crown Clasp, much more solid in this generation. Even though the exterior aesthetics are subtle, it feels like a million dollars on the wrist, finally feeling as good as it looks. Now, the dial of this one is interesting because it features both brilliant cut diamonds as well as baguettes. You can see the baguettes at six o'clock and nine o'clock, brilliant cuts at all the other stations, and then a spectacular golden gilt printed navy blue sunburst metallic dial. This is about as sensational as a 36 millimeter watch gets. So sir, if you're watching, congratulations. You just bought a hell of a Rolex. That said, I did offer you more than just Rolex and Okay, let's take a look at something that's easily accessible, historically evocative, and yet still offers a good deal of horological interest. With a 54-hour power reserve, a column wheel action, and a mono pusher, this is the Longines Avagation 1935 stainless steel 41 millimeters. This is a gorgeous watch. Now, we were talking about dial treatments, a spectacular combination of 1935-inspired blued cathedral-style hands and deliciously 1930s Arabic numerals. They've got a little bit of Art Deco formality to them, but at the same time, they have a little bit of the lush, overwrought serifs and excess of late pocket watches. And in many ways, that's what this watch evokes. It feels like a pocket watch from the early aviation era that's been converted pocket watch case and welded lugs to a wristwatch. You can even see it has the gorgeous pocket watch style, mono pusher and crown in line. Uh, I believe this would be your lapine style as you have the crown in line with the coaxial mono pusher as well as the hands and the registers and the index at 12. A gorgeous watch, a celebration of Longines aviation heritage and an absolute pleasure to operate. There's something magical about mono pushers, even if they're a bit primitive. Again, column wheel and 54 hour power reserve. This is the Longines L788 caliber that's exclusive to Longines within the Swatch Group. And that's a watch that retails for about $3,200. So pre-owned, it's an absolute gem. It does have a close cousin. And for those who prefer to see their calibers and perhaps are less inclined towards a vintage aesthetic. You want a little bit of vintage. You don't want overwhelming overtones. This is an evocative watch that, again, brings you back to an era without being a slave to it. This is the column wheel single push piece Longines Heritage Chronograph, beautiful white lacquer dial. It looks exactly like enamel. It has the same gloss, the same gleam, the same appearance of wet paint. There's a tack scale that's been printed base 1000. We may as well start this one up. Also a column wheel mono pusher chronograph in a 41 millimeter case. This one looks more like a wristwatch. It's not designed to evoke a converted pocket watch. It has strong lugs that are sharply defined and faceted, almost like metal gems. Reasonably slim, 14 millimeters in profile. What really sets this one apart is that you can see the movement. So in addition to the more contemporary style, you can actually see the Valshu 7750 that's been converted to become the Longines L788 II. And you can see the column wheel mechanism that makes this one an aesthetic and a tactile pleasure to operate. This is a superb watch also retailing for under 3100 US. This is the kind of watch you can pretty much wear all the time. Save those times when you must immerse your chronograph 30 meters water resistant, this one, but we have better options for getting wet and wild with your sports watch. Okay, so friends who are just joining us right now, keep in mind all of you can enter to win the Bird Valle Horological Sculpture. And I'm going to cut and paste the link so you can sign up. Remember, if you click the link and then participate in some of our social media, we will actually wait your chance of winning. If you subscribe to our channels, you like us on Facebook, you interact with our Instagram, this gets closer to your desk. Thanks to our friends at Bird Valle, $2,700 retail value, a hell of a lot better than getting a hat. Sorry, Tag Heuer, I love those hats. Sorry, Patek, I love those ties, but this beats all. Okay, Francisco Fernandez joining us from Mexico. And Pilot Style 123 asking, how much did I miss? Uh, only all of the pilots watch. Sorry, Pilot Style. Let me give you a quick glimpse of what you missed. You missed the Longines Mono Pusher Chronographs, the Heritage Chrono, 
and the Avagation 1935. Lovely watches. I'm going to have videos up on this channel of those watches soon, so if you missed it, don't fret. Let's say you do want to get your sports watch wet. Well, there's no better way than something with style, with substance, with a little bit of panache. And we talked about vintage inspiration. Sometimes we're not trying to evoke an era so much as an aura. And that's what you get with the Breguet Marine. Now, this is the 39 millimeter stainless steel Breguet Marine that just bowed out. We saw a new Marine family at Basel World 2018. This is the older watch. Now, 39 millimeters, reference 5817. It had been around since 2004, but guess what? Breguet got it right out of the gate. 100 meters water resistant. The dial itself is not only cut on a rose lathe. Many so-called guilloche dials are actually stamped, but this is not only cut on a rose lathe by a guilloche, a specialized artisan, but it is silvered solid gold. So you're getting a very substantial dial. In addition to the artistry and the handcraft, it is a true piece of precious metal. Now it is though the watch has Breguet style hands, they have a small amount of super luminova in the apertures. You'll also note small pips around the hours and highly stylized Breguet Roman numerals. Now turn it on its flank, the case is cold rolled and then hand finished to produce the effect you see here, the coining. Also note the double step of the bezel. The watch is evocative of the timepieces of Breguet's era without necessarily emulating any true Breguet timepiece, and that's what I like. This was the style pioneered by Daniel Roth under the show May Brothers in the 70s and 80s when he was the head honcho at Breguet. He helped to set the styling norms and design language that continue into the Swatch group today. And this watch carried on much of what that era of Breguet had pioneered. Beautiful, evocative, and yet, again, not slavishly plastered to the Breguet era. These are modern watches that evoke a feeling and aura. And again, if you want to get your fine watch wet, it helps to have something like a Breguet Marine that is both beautiful and rugged, 100 meter water resistant and screw down crown. Also rarely seen on the full metal bracelet. These are generally delivered on alligator or on rubber. The bracelet is opulent, richly finished and very comfortable. Okay, Bob Rouleau saying, I like the Breguet, it won't hack, however. This is true. It's an older Le Mans based caliber. It's beautifully finished by Breguet, and it does feature the double digit date with quick set, but it does not have hacking seconds. Quel dommage. That said, you won't be disappointed if you purchase that watch. I can also see Eddie Landsberg saying, join the Watchbox Live group on Facebook. He's a longtime friend of the brand. We always thank him for his support in all media. And I can also see, uh, Bob Rouleau answering Pilot Style, how much did you miss? About 10 minutes. So we're 10 minutes in right here with Enrique Doc joining us from Spain, and he is a Breguet fan. Shannon of Germany is saying he prefers the older Marine to the 2018 version, and until I see the new watch in the hand, I'm going to have to agree with you. I really like the older watch. That said, let's go from sports style to haute de gamme, and let's go from diving to, I don't know, bump, 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 bump. Let's go from lyrical experience to the eye, lyrical experience to the ear, trading one art for another, trading one form of virtuosity for the next. This is a watch that is very much in the styling tradition of modern Breguet. But here's the thing. This is the Musical. Reference 7800, it is a monster. 48 millimeters in yellow gold, but you get what you pay for. Now that center dial is guilloche platinum. The rest of the dial is gold. And as you can see, the case flank has been meticulously engraved with musical bars, sheet music transcribed onto the form of yellow gold. The back of the watch, as you can see, is actually a multi-layered Helmholtz resonator. It plays the Thieving Magpie by Rossini, but what does that actually mean? What does that actually sound like? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I am going to fire it up. So if you're wondering why it does that, A, because it's awesome, and B, you can sound it on demand, but it also acts as an alarm. So this is a 
very elaborate alarm watch. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's playing because there is a little bit of animation about the dial. The center of the dial, the part that's in platinum, is actually mobile and features small prongs on its underside that stroke musical reeds, 15 of them, that play the music. Like a minute repeater, it features a governor, but instead of inertial or friction, it is a magnetic governor and that's completely silent. So let me show you how this works. Now first things first, you have to wind it. and it has a power reserve on the dial, so you know when it's ready to go. So this is what it looks like as it plays. You can see you have an on-off toggle. There's a little musical note that lets you know when the alarm is armed. You can see that there is a small hand with a clef that points to the time for which the alarm is set. And then there's a power reserve scale at what would be about three o'clock on the dial showing you the power reserve for the music box function. That watch came out in 2010. I've only just seen my first one in this right here, one of the rarest modern Breguet timepieces. If you want something that nobody has, you have to consider the 7800 Music Hall. It lives up to its name. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the wrist because you're wondering, what does a 48 millimeter watch in gold look like on the wrist? I promised you precious metal tonight, not just Rolex. You can see, it's a big watch, and I would recommend your wrist be at least 17 centimeters in circumference before you try to wear this thing in earnest. But if your wrist is 16 centimeters like mine, it will fit, it will stay put. Just keep in mind, this is a watch that is purposefully huge. It is big for a reason. It's a music box and a rather small music box rather than an oversized watch. All right, Shamal Das joining us from Sydney. Thanks for joining us, Shamal. You're not too late. We've still got plenty of watches on the table tonight. Now, I showed you a way that you can get luxury watches, luxury hor horology for less. Well, if you want true high horology, hand finished and hand executed, sometimes you have to go off the beaten path. And I've got two forms of what I consider high horology, handmade, handcrafted, hand finished watchmaking from a company out of Le Chaux de Fonds called Jacques Hedro. We hardly ever mention them and they're part of the Swatch Group, but we never talk about what Jacques Hedro brings to the table. Now we're going to lift the lid and draw the curtain. Okay, very cool watches here. I'm going to get as close as I can. This is the Jacques Hedro La Chaux de Fonds Tourbillon. 88 hour manual wind power reserve. It has two scales at the nine o'clock side of its dial an 88 hour power reserve at the three o'clock side of its dial, a retrograding date indicator. At six o'clock you can see a tourbillon cage and the tourbillon is entirely hand finished with one measure that very few watch brands think to take, which is a ruby substituted for a blued sapphire. So instead of a synthetic ruby as the pivot jewel for the tourbillon, a blued synthetic sapphire has been inserted. You also see corresponding blued screws assembling the tourbillon cage itself. Gorgeous accents. If you turn the watch on its side, you can see the depth of this dial, which is featured in two semicircles. You have the top with the, the time and the scales for power reserve and date. And then you have the bottom with a mirror polished edge reflecting the tourbillon and a black polished tourbillon cage and tourbillon bridge. You'll also note blackened Cote de Genève beneath. And the watch is all of white gold. If you look at the crown side, you can see that the crown features a coaxial pusher that is used to adjust the date. And I'm gonna show you how that works right now. It's a coaxial system for the retrograde date. And keep an eye on the date system. You simply adjust it as you see fit. It solves the long standing problem of the date aperture on a watch, which many feel spoils the aesthetic of a fine watch. Watch it retrograde and boom, just like that. So you have a date, but you don't have a date window and you have a date pusher to actuate it. You can also get a great view of that tourbillon from this angle and this close focus. Thanks guys for capturing that. Also look at the back, blackened Cote de Genève and you see those same blued sapphire pivots rather than 
rubies. 28 pieces made, you'll never see another one. But that's not all Jacques Hedro has. You could argue that they're best known for their Grand Second series. The company was only reestablished in 2001 by Swatch, so they're a relatively recent development. And during the 2000s, the height of the mortgage-backed securities craze, I was there. I worked in that industry. There was no hotter brand than Jacques Hedro, and the Grand Second was the flagship. Enamel dials were their calling card. Back in the day, during the 2000s, Anita Porsche, who today works at Patek Philippe as one of their lead enamelers, she was with Jacques Hedro. Now, this is a gorgeous 88-piece limited edition. It's the Grand Second Power Reserve with ivory Grand Faux enamel dial. It is sensational. Now, when I talk about high horology, I always say it has to be hand-finished hand-tuned, hand-regulated, hand-crafted. This is that. The dial is a sensation. It absolutely pops. You have the blue accents, the enamel base in ivory, and then you have a gorgeous caliber on the back with a 72-hour power reserve. This is also hand-finished, so let me see if I can clean off that sapphire so you can get a better view. But this is a beautifully executed Frederic Piguet base. They share movement families with Blancpain, so you're getting the same level of watchcraft and the same level of finish. 88 pieces. This is a truly sensational watch to strap onto your wrist. Everyone will ask you, what is it? But they will add, by the way, I love it, whatever it is. 41 millimeters in white gold. Or excuse me, this one's a 43. I'm about to show you a 41 with an oddball complication that has stolen my heart. Okay, this is the Jacques Hedro 12 Cities in 41 millimeters, a discontinued reference. This is a gorgeous 88-piece series. By the way, if you feel like they're pandering to Far Eastern predilection for the number eight, you're absolutely right. And this one was a wonderful 12-city dual time. So you have 12 cities, you have a jump hour, and then you have a pusher adjuster. Uh, yeah, actually, we just had a friend join us from Sydney, so appropriately, we have Sydney set. Of course, the time is wrong. But you see how you can set the 12 representative cities. So you can have 12 cities representing 12 principal time zones, and then for each of the 12, you can set the time as you please. Now, the watch is a jump hour. I'll settle on New York because I'm in Philadelphia. So let me show you how that works. Jump hours are one of my favorite alternative time complications because the simplicity and the dynamism of them just steal my heart. There's something magical about the hour that jumps instantly on the hour. It animates the dial, it's quirky, it's also practical as the digital display is large and easy to read. You get an optimized radial minutes display, you get the simplicity of reading the exact hour there. Now it's 8.05, now it's 8.10, and just like that, now it's 9.20. I am absolutely in love with this watch. White gold, 41 millimeters, 12 time zones, jump hour. All of that plus an enamel dial in the same ivory that you saw on the Grand Second. 88 pieces in white gold with the same immaculate level of movement finish executed. This is a beautiful and uncommon watch. And provided you're willing to buy pre-owned so you don't take the appreciation hit, and you're not a slave to brand name, this is an awesome way to go high horology without compromise and quite a good deal of charm and exclusivity. Okay, Eddie's asking, can I change the time slowly so we can see the jump? Uh, I'm afraid there's really no, there's nothing slow about the jump. The whole point is that it's instantaneous. So there's always gonna be a little bit of overlap between the digital display and the minute hand. As the minute hand closes in, maybe as we get to double digits, it'll be easier to see. You see how that works? We'll slow it down again. It is bang instant. There is no slop, no slack. There's no variation. When that minute hand hits 60, this thing snaps. This is one of my favorite watches I've encountered here in a while. I could play with this thing all day, literally all night. Take it home. Give it a good one. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. 
I can see that the one in yellow is saying that Jack H. Rowe is more interesting to him than IWC's Paul Weber 150-year timepiece. Well, it's true. That is jumping minutes and jumping hours. This is jumping hours, enamel dial, white gold case, 88-piece limited edition, gorgeous display case back over a hand-finished movement, 12 time zones. There's a lot to recommend that watch, quite frankly. Now, let's take a look at something that's a little bit more mainstream but gives you an uncompromised level of luxury horology. So this is the 2016 Basel World debut Omega Constellation Globemaster annual calendar. This is a beautiful execution of a modern take on the 1952 Pi Pan Constellation. Anyone who's familiar with the Griffin Claw Omega Constellation since 1982 realizes that they are absolutely celebrated and beloved in East Asia. But to many Western audiences that remember the original, those don't feel like the constellation. This, on the other hand, is exactly the constellation. Annual calendar with a radial month display. It requires adjustment only once a year in the jump from February to March, 41 millimeters. It's a combination of two fascinating metals, steel, which I love on a luxury complication because it's everyday durable, and tungsten carbide for the bezel. That's a bezel made of the same material as the weapon concept known as rods from God. So if you've heard of the idea of the kinetic impactor, basically a mass of tungsten carbide dropped out of orbit onto a target, hitting with the force of a small nuke, it's this material, specifically because it is so tough. It's protecting the beautifully finished, almost cushion style case of this Globe Master annual calendar. In person, the dial has beautiful blue accents, plenty of luminescence, and I'm happy to say, a wonderful opaline gray granular, almost pebbly texture. This is a fantastic watch. Coaxial chronometer, master chronometer, so it's the Meitaz standard chronometer, 60-hour power reserve. Lots to recommend this watch. But I can see the one in yellow is saying he owns the constellation, but not the annual calendar. That's okay. I'm a fan of all Omegas. That's where I started in luxury watches. Okay. Also, I can see bump, 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 bump. The month script is too flamboyant for pilot style one, two, three. That's true. Some people are not going to be fans of the radial month indicator. The bottom line, though, is that's why Omega offers you options. You can get the standard annual calendar. There's actually a 52-piece green platinum version of that watch that gives me like a heart murmur. Like, it does bad things to my emotions. The green platinum watch, if it ever lands here, I'm going to have trouble not buying it. Minute repeater, show up before that thing does, please. All right, Eddie, going to work. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us when you could, Ed. I appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about a watch you can buy that ticks all the right boxes for me. We often talk about how there is nothing but devolution with time rather than evolution. Sometimes we have a hankering for what came before rather than what is now. And in the case of the blue lacquer dial, second generation Vacheron Overseas Chronograph, Yes, please. I like the Generation 3. I will even say that with the brown dial, I prefer it to the Generation 2, except for this one. This had a relatively short run. We first saw the overseas Generation 2 chronograph in 2004. We saw the first rubber strap iteration in 2009 with the Deep Stream. It wasn't until 2012 that this model, with a gorgeous gloss blue lacquer dial, finally debuted. It was with us from 2012 to 2015, and then finito. This watch is an all-timer. This is the modern Vacheron sports watch. 150 meters water resistant. You can see the image of the Italian naval training vessel Amerigo Vespucci on the back. That was actually the inspiration for the, for the image of the vessel on the case back. 150 meter water resistant, 25,000 ampere per meter, anti-magnetic. It's that double digit date and the asymmetrical dial with the oversized minutes register that steals our hearts. This is the all around sports watch, the one you can wear with a suit, with a bathing suit in the boardroom, on the boardwalk, absolutely anywhere. And if you're wondering how this cushion 42 and a half millimeter case wears on a 16 centimeter wrist, there you go, guys. It wears phenomenally well. This is a watch with a vertical clutch, automatic column wheel chronograph movement from Frederic Piguet that lives up to the Vacheron legend. It's an absolute pleasure to wear and to own. This is a watch that I count among my absolute favorite VCs all time. 
bum, 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 bum. And I can also say that I have a direct competitor to that one, and a period competitor, no less, on the table. Because in 2012, we got both that blue lacquer dial overseas in steel and the 41 millimeter Royal Oak chronograph, reference 26. 320ST. So these watches both came out in 2012. Both of them are fairly similar in size, both made of steel. This is 41 millimeters. This is 42.5. This right here is about 11.1 millimeters thick. This is about 12.5. They're very close. Both of them are powered by the exact same movement, the Frederic Piguet 1185. The difference is Vacheron fits its own double-digit date complication module on top. Now, the real difference for me is that the Vacheron is 150 meters water resistant. The AP, even though AP says it's okay for swimming, is 50 meters water resistant, so this is the tougher watch. That said, this watch features more hand finishing because it's mounted on a full hand-finished, hand-executed AP steel bracelet, and if you know a thing or two about AP steel bracelets, you'll know that they are exceptionally labor-intensive to finish and expensive, so much so that I've pe seen people make fake white gold links on these watches, try to insert the links and keep the steel links to sell themselves while trying to pass off the white gold as original. Why? Because these steel links, as finished by Audemars Piguet, cost more to make than the same link in white gold would. So these are two different takes on the same kind of sports watch idea. Both of them will fit on a smaller wrist, but I'm a little bit more of a Vacheron persuasion between these two. How about you guys? Let me know in the chat. I can see Bob Rouleau saying, I prefer the blue VC dial, and Shannon, AP and Patek Philippe have iconic model lines. VC does not. That's true. But iconic moments, iconic images, and dogmas aside, yeah, the 70s were great to AP and Patek with those sports watches, but VC just nailed it with this thing. This is going to be a legend of tomorrow. 30 years from now, we'll be talking about this. I can also see right here, we got a lot of fellas joining us. Uh, Jao Ribeiro joining us, Mike K. For some reason, AP and Patek get more attention than VC. Is it better marketing? Part of it's that. It's also the fact that AP and Patek are a lot more heavily dependent on sports watches, and VC still pushes dress watches really hard, whereas right now, steel sports watches are the thing. The Royal Oak and the Offshore are basically the twin pillars holding up AP, and at Patek, the Aquanaut and the Nautilus, which haven't been meaningfully redesigned in years, are making bank for them. And remember, even the new Aquanaut chronograph is a combination of two things, the movement and the Aquanaut, that Patek already had lying around. Vacheron spent a lot of money on the Generation 3 overseas, and I think it's the best pre-owned sports watch buy in the Haute de Gamme category right now. Let's send ourselves off with a bang, and sometimes dynamite, as they say in the Marines, comes in small packages. What if you wanted a perpetual calendar? How about adding a chronograph to that? Maybe a moon phase? How about making it a flyback chronograph? How about making it all 100 meters water resistant steel, 38 millimeters with a display case back? Blancpain can do that. That's right, from the people who brought you the 50 Fathoms, and shockingly to some, more than just the 50 Fathoms, it is the Blancpain Le Mans Perpetual Calendar Flyback Chronograph. Black dial, fully luminescent, broad sword hands, beautifully loomed. This is a flyback chronograph that is also a perpetual calendar and a moon phase. It features screw-down crowns and chronograph pushers that wonderful flyback action, crisp column wheel operation. And as you can see, I'm gonna open this one up for your advantage. It features both the legendary Blancpain X71 bracelet, and you can see the movement, the Frédéric Piguet 1185 base, with flyback functionality and perpetual calendar, entirely hand finished. This is a watch that shatters your conceptions about what Blancpain can be and also where you should turn for your next high horology timepiece. Can we get a little closer to the movement, guys? This is a watch that's as handsome on the backside as it is on the front, and so rare that you're gonna run into 10 Patek Philippe steel sports watches for every one of these you encounter. Maybe more Pateks, because I've only seen one of these in the last couple of years, and we have three 5711 1As in steel right now. This is a truly special watch. Now you can get a perpetual calendar chronograph from Patek. 
it won't be automatic winding. It won't be a flyback. It certainly won't be 100 meters water resistant. Will the finishing be a little bit better in detail? Yes, but at the same time, this is where the unconventional collector finds unconventional value. And I'm happy to say that if, like me, you've got a smaller wrist, this thing looks the business on a wrist of any size. I'm gonna end on a high note. That's my dynamite in a small package. The Blanc Paul Le Mans Perpetual Calendar Flyback Chronograph in stainless steel, guys. Stainless steel. That is your everyday grand complication wristwatch. Thank you everyone who joined me tonight. I appreciate all the input, all the participation, all the feedback on the watches we have on the table. Remember, the fun continues. Subscribe to this channel. I post four new reviews every single day. And follow me, Tim underscore Masa on Instagram. I'm now posting a daily one minute watch review video on my Instagram channel. And this VC is the latest watch I just posted before the show. So the one minute watch review of the Vacheron Overseas Blue Lacquer Dial. See it on Tim underscore Masso on Instagram. Until then, I'm Tim. This is Watchbox Reviews. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.